Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. And what we have here is kind of an amalgamation of muzzleloading history recreated as a Victorian curiosity. I selected this muzzleloader not necessarily for its historic significance, but primarily just to show off kind of the artistic execution of this piece. On just about every flat surface here, we have some beautiful, I believe, acid etching, some beautiful floral and scroll patterns. We have these applied inlays all over the stock that are also etched and just beautiful. Even the lock face on this smooth bore wheel lock is just beautiful. We have several kind of medieval characters on this lock piece accompanying these beautiful scroll and floral patterns. So our barrel is about 43 inches long. It is a smooth bore barrel and it is somewhere up above 75 caliber. Um, it's a very large bore smooth bore. We have a simple bead front sight at the end accompanying our large heart shaped rear sight here about six inches forward of our pan and our touch hole. Jumping back here to our butt stock, we have a sheet iron butt plate on here, very flat once again, like we see in many early styled muzzle loaders. It has these interesting floral shapes that are bent over and pinned to the side of the stock back here at the butt stock. These leaf patterns back here are very representative and, and very replicated all through this rifle. It's kind of a, a muzzleloader of nature, I would say, just because of the patterns applied to it. Accompanying these panels, we have six of these etched or, or filed or carved studs kind of tacked in here to the stock, giving us some three-dimensional texture. As we come forward, like many wheel locks assemblies, we have a very large lock plate. This lock goes all the way back through the wrist basically and comes up here forward a few inches forward of our touch hole. At the front of our wheel assembly here we have a man in some noble styled clothes on a horse with a spear and then on our wheel here on this wheel face we have etched floral patterns as well as some large hairs that are running so as this wheel turns then we're going to see those rabbits look as if they are running stretched out in a dead run, possibly running from our nobleman hunter here at the forefront. Coming back here to the head of our flint holder here, this lock plate is, is covered up by much of this assembly here, but this assembly does feature some filed markings here to give it some decorative element. And even the beveled faces of this lock plate, although the main face is covered, we do see some etched diamond patterns on here. Really kind of a you know, it might not look it because this is an aged muzzleloader, most definitely, but this is kind of a, of a high art execution of a muzzleloader, I would say. It's just beautifully done, not really enjoyable. And, and although this is etched, this would all be applied and drawn out by hand, possibly with a pattern of some kind, but still this would be executed by hand. And I think it's just very nicely done. I, I love these natural patterns that we see in kind of this era of artwork. And uh, this is no exception, even though it is on a firearm like this. Below our lock assembly, we have a large bulbous area of this stock to accommodate the internals of our wheel lock. Our trigger guard is this beautifully formed iron trigger guard, very common for this period. It's kind of a, a sheet, but it has some bulbous texture to it, as well as our finger slots here for our fingers to comfortably wrap around this trigger guard if they need to. Inside our trigger guard, we have a simple iron trigger plate. We have some duplication of these bulbous uh, nails or tacks in the stock going into this trigger plate, perhaps holding the plate to the stock. Our tang on the top of our butt stock here, shaped out to a nice triangle. We have the bulb of our tang bolt sticking up here. This tang is flanked on either side by more inlaid etched panels here with that same beautiful scroll pattern etching. The tang itself and the first section of the barrel here are also etched. On the barrel, the top three flats of the barrel are etched here in this octagonal section. Our vertical faces of the barrel are not etched. Coming forward of our lock assembly, we have our four stock and again we have the replication of these inlaid silver plates or iron plates here that have been etched. 
The shapes change as we get out to the forestock because our canvas is changing shape. So our canvas is now shorter and longer and the plates change in size and shape to accommodate that. The shape's main body are rectangles, but then we see some curved and floral motifs at either end, adding some decorative elements. Our ramrod channel is wood here, and we have a wooden entry pipe, so to speak. We don't have any hardware back here where the entry pipe enters the stock. Coming forward though, we do have two iron or sheet metal here ramrod pipes. The one here out at the fore end has some decoration, but our middle ramrod pipe does not have any decoration. Flipping over to our side plate side now, our forestock is very similar to the other side with these etched plates set into the stock. As we get back here though, to the main body of the stock, the lock or action area here, we have two large lock bolts at the front and one at the rear here. In the style that we see in many later muzzleloaders, but we have three here. So we have one at the head, one at the tail, and one in the center. These lock bolts aren't connected by a single side plate. Instead, each bolt has its own floral decorative side plate. The front and rear floral plates here are etched and decorated, but our center one is not. On either side of our center lock bolt here on the side plate side, we have two more panels set in here and etched. The one to the rear features some simple borders and floral patterns. The one below our center lock bolt also features the same floral leaf patterns, but it also features a topless mermaid motif. It's a motif we see in many sections of artwork and many mediums of artwork in this era. Coming back to the cheek piece side of our butt stock here, we have two matching plates in shape to the other side, but our etching is very different where on the lock face side, the presentation side, we'll call it, we had some pretty advanced uh, etching in there with some figures and some creatures. This side features some very basic leaf and scroll floral patterns, very much, I would say, in contrast to the other etching here on this muzzleloader. This muzzleloader is certainly an interesting piece, a curiosity from another age, but uh, still kind of piques my curiosity today here. So I hope that you've enjoyed taking a look at it here with me at the Rock Island Auction Company. I'd like to thank the Rock Island Auction Company and their team of describers for helping with the research and the presentation for these pieces. I could not present these wonderful historic pieces to you without their help. So I do appreciate that. If you would like to learn more about this and any of the other muzzleloaders that we're talking about here at the Rock Island Auction Company, I encourage you to visit the Rock Island Auction Company social media pages for some high quality photos and educational videos about historic arms. I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.